sort of <coughs> condensed biography of all of them. You know, the usual stuff, date of birth, where they were born, where they died, who they married, etc., etc. <coughs> My dad made copies from the strip.
there was a meeting at the location last night, and it was decided that we'll call for a general stay at home. We start boycotting classes tomorrow as part of that campaign. Does Mr. M know about this? I guess he does, ma'am. Wasn't he at the meeting? The meeting was organized by the Conrad. He wasn't, he, he wasn't welcome. Because his ideas are old fashioned. Yes. School boycott. Comrades. So our safe, contented little came to be finally going to find out what it's all about. How long do you think it will last? I don't know. A week? It will be longer. A month? Two months? We'll come back to school when the authorities scrap down to education and recognize and negotiate with the student committee. That was the resolution last night. But when it's all over, you know, the boycott and everything, could we carry on then if there was still time? I haven't thought about that yet. So think about it, please. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. <sighs> Much enthusiasm there, Mr. Mbikwana. But, I mean, you're right. Why worry about a stupid competition? I mean, it'll probably be too late anyways. So that's it then. Let's just... Well, let's just say we gave ourselves a crash course in English literature. I mean, could have done a lot worse with our spare time. Well, I certainly enjoyed myself. I read a lot of beautiful poetry I might never have gotten around to. <coughs> but it doesn't mean that everything, though, does it? I mean, you and I can still go on meeting as friends, can't we? Most unhappy 
carry your heart with soul. Don't you know that? Did you have your fingers in your ass? The thousand of times I said in the classroom. Where were you when I stood there and I said that I regarded it as my duty, my deepest obligation to you, young men and women, to sabotage it? And then my conscience will not allow me to rest until I have succeeded. And I have succeeded. Yes, I have succeeded. And I have irrefutable proof of my success. You! You can stand here and accuse me unjustly because I have had a battle and I have won mine. I have liberated your mind despite the fucking bank medication was trying to do with it. Your mouth full of big words and long sentences which the not so clever comments are asking you to write and speak for them. Your wonderful elegance at last night meeting which got them all so excited. Yes, I read about it. You must thank me for all of that time. No, I won't. You never taught me any of these lessons. I see. You have other features now, have you? Yes. You just were listening, whispering. There are men now who are teaching us to shout. Those little tricks and jokes of yours in the classroom liberated nothing. This struggle doesn't need the big English words you taught me how to spell. Oh, be careful, Tabby. Be careful. Be careful. Don't scorn words. They are magical, sacred. Yes, they are. Do you know that without words a man cannot think? It's true. Take that back as a present from the despised Mr. M and share it with your comrades. Tell them that the difference between a man and an animal is that a man thinks and he does so with words. Consider the mighty ox, four powerful legs, massive shoulders, and a beautiful thick hide which shields and protect our warriors on the battlefield. Think of its, its beautiful head, its long horns, and its terrible bellow when it forms its lungs when it charges a rifle. But it cannot speak, and therefore it is stupid. And along comes this funny little creature on two legs, no horns, and skin that is worth nothing. And he tells the ox what to do. It is his master tongue, and he is so because he can speak. If the struggle needs weapons, give it words. Stones and patrol bombs can't get into those armored cars. Words can. They can do something even more devastating than that. They can get inside the head of those inside the armored cars. I speak to you like this because if I have faith in anything, it's the faith in the power of the word. Like my master, the great Confucius, I too believe that by using only words, a man can right the wrong and judge and execute the wrongdoer. You were meant to speak like that. Talk to the others. Bring them back into the classroom. They will listen to you. They look up to you as a leader. No, I won't. Talk about them as <coughs> though there were lots of sheep waiting to be there. They know what they are doing. They call me a traitor if I try to convince them otherwise. And listen to me very carefully, Tab. I received instructions from the department to make a list of all those who are taking part in this boycott. Do you know what they will do that list when all this is over? Because don't fool yourself. It will be. When your boycott comes to a glorious end, like all the others, they're going to make all of you apply for readmission. And if your name is on that list, will you do that? Will you make that list for them? That is none of your business. Then don't ask me questions about my. Yes, I will! I will ask you as much questions as I like. Do you know why? Because I am a man, and you are a boy. And if you are not to ask me tomorrow, you will be a very stupid boy. Then stop calling me names, Mr. Mayor. Then what must I call you? Call me Tammy? Never! You are a stupid old man. And without education, you will go up to be a stupid man. Don't 
wait till tomorrow to make your decision, Mr. Ayan. You can start now. Write down your first name. Tell me in the corner. Building barricades. First, I tried to be like the street. And then I, I turned on to Quasar Road. And then onto that very street. And then I just I gave up. I walked around hopelessly, aimlessly, watching my my world will me go mad and set itself on fire. I ended up at the corner where Mrs. McKenney would sit, selling Veco et and prickle pears to the people waiting for the boss. The only person that was there was little Sebo Francini from Standard Six, writing on the wall, liberation first, then education. He saw me and shouted out, Mr. M, is the spelling right? <laughs> and he meant it. Those young eyes in that little smoke-stained face were terribly serious. Some place as a policeman raced past me with students who should have been in the desk in school. The little hands wave to the barricades. Teacher! Teacher, help us! Tell our mothers, tell our fathers, teacher! Do something, Anella. Stand there and close your eyes. And don't wake up until your world was the way it was before. That didn't happen. And so this is a, a police fire race past me and children were all over the streets throwing stones and petrol bombs. Do something, Anella. Do something! Stop the madness! Stop the madness! Johnny Abu, living or dead. Christopher Banda, living or dead. Zandri Suwati, living or dead. Stephanie Zambuza, Roland Gashka, 
Stephen Geiger. Zachariah Jabavu. Tommy. Tommy in Bikwana. Living or dead? How many young souls do we have here this morning? There are a lot of well-aimed straight bullets flying all over the street out there. Is that, is that why the silence is, is so heavy? But what can I teach you now? My lessons were, were meant to help you in this world. <coughs> I wanted you to, to, to know how to, to read and write and talk. In this world of living, stupid, cruel man. Now, oh my children, Mr. Emmett and all of his wonderful words are useless, useless, useless. subjects now, haven't you? You know something interesting, Danny? If you were to put these two on a scale, I think you would find they were just about the same. But at this time, I know the entire English language. And this, this is just one word in that language. Yes, it's true. All that beautiful poetry that you need is about crying inside of your head. And here, 26 letters. 60,000 words. The greatest soul this world has ever seen were able to open the floodgates of their joy, their despair, their ecstasy by using words from this little book. Aren't you tempted? I was. Anela Mayala, cookhouse. It was one of the first books I ever bought. I want you to have it. I've come here to warn you. You have you are, I have already told you. You're wasting your breath. So here, take it so that go. There are lots of unworking windows left. It's not about the school bell now. Really, this bell is the most important thing in my life. There was a midnight location last night. And someone stood up and denounced you as an informer. He said you gave names to the police. Everybody's talking about it this morning. You're in big danger. Why are you telling me about this? So you can save yourself. There is a plan to match the school and burn it down. If they find you, if they find you, what? Go on. If they find you here, what? They will kill you. Remember 
what I told you to have. If you have a problem, put it into words so that you can look at it, handle it, and ultimately solve it. They will kill me. You are right. <coughs> that is terribly serious. So tell me, what must I do? Must I run away and hide somewhere? No. Don't find you. You must join the boycott. <coughs> Lucia.
So then it's all over. Because this, this is my own, my life, my one and only ambition to be a good teacher. Anela Mayala, age 20, from Cook House, wanted to be that, the way your friends want to be soccer stars, they were Kaiser Chief. That ambition goes way back to when he was just a, a skinny little 10 year old. We were on our way to a, a rugby match at Somerset East. The Lord had stopped on top of the mountain so that we could stretch our legs. It is very high on top of the mountain, you know. I looked out. And there it was. Stretching from, from the foot of the mountain. The great pile of the coral. Stretching away from wherever it seemed into the purple haze and the heat of the horizon. I had never seen anything so beautiful in all my life. Something Something hold me and squeeze me at that moment and did not release me until there were tears in my eyes. In all my life, I'd never seen anything so beautiful. I went to the teacher who was with us and asked, Teacher, if I were to walk that way, where would I come to? And I pointed. He looked at me and laughed. Little man, that way is north. And if you were to walk that way and keep on walking and your legs don't give in, you will see all of Africa. Yes, Africa, little man. You'll see the rivers of this continent, the Vaal, the Limpopo, the Zambesi, and then the mighty Nile. You'll see the mountains, the Johannesburg, the Kilimanjaro, Rwenzori, and then Kenya. You'll see all of our brothers, the little pygmies of the forest, the proud Masai, the Watusu, proudest of the proud, and the Kikubu standing on, on one leg like a heron in the pond waiting for a frog. And has teacher seen all of that, I ask? No. Then how does teacher know that it's there? Because it is all in the books. And I have read the books. And if you do good in school, you can be saved without ever having to worry about your legs giving in. And he was right, Danny. I have seen it. It was all here in the books, just like he said it would be. And I have made it mine. I don't want to, to take that journey again, Danny. If someone working for me now at the end of it was made a mockery of all of my visions of strength. He formed in his hands my true birthright. I saw him on a television set on the Reverend Mopi's Lounge. An Ethiopian tribesman carrying in his hands a little bundle who had died of hunger in the famine. A little bundle carelessly wrapped in a few rags. I couldn't tell how old he was. The lines of starvation and despair on his face made him look as old as Africa itself. He held that bundle very lightly as he made his way to a mass grave. And when he reached it, <coughs> he didn't even have enough strength in his, in his arms to to lay it down gently. He just opened his, his hands and let it fall. I was very upset at the end of that program. No one had thought to, to, to tell us who he was or whether or not he was the child's father or grandfather or uncle. And the baby too. Did it have a name? How dare you show me one of my children being thrown away without telling me its name? I demand you to know who was in that bundle.
not knowing their names doesn't matter any more than me. They are more than themselves. The tribesmen and, and their child do do to duty for all of us. Every soul in Africa is either carrying that bundle or in it. What is wrong with this world that it, it wants to waste all of you like that? My children, my Africa, my young, proud, precious Africa. Don't go out there, Mr. Emma. Let me go and talk to them first. Listen to me. I'll tell them that I've confronted you with the charges and that you deny it and that I believe you. I'll tell them you are innocent. You will do that with him? Yes. Why would you do all of that with him? I've told you before. The cause? Yes. Yes. Then I don't need to hide behind stupid lies. They will kill you. Do you think I am frightened of them? Do you think I am frightened of dying? Someone found out that Mr. M was an informer. 
Uh, you mean that list of pupils taking part in the boycott? You call that informing? No. It was more than that. He went to the police and gave them the names and the addresses of our political action committee. All of them were arrested after the visit. They are now in detention. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. I don't believe it. It's true. It's what true. proof do you have? His own words. He told me so himself. I didn't believe it initially when I was first accused, but the last time I saw him, he told me so himself that he had been to the police. It's not like he was paid or anything. He went to the police just that once. He said it was his duty. What do you mean? Operation Kumsa. The boycotts, the strikes, the absence. You, you or something know that. He never agreed with any of that stuff. But I think he was also very confused about it all. I think he wished he had never done it. So he went to the police just once? Yes. As a matter of conscience? Yes. That doesn't make him an informer, Tommy. So what do you call someone that gives information to the police? No. You know what that word means, what sort of person it suggests. Was Mr. N one of those? He thought he was acting out of concern for his people. You said so yourself. He thought he was doing the right thing. You don't murder a man for that. Be careful, Isabel. What? The words you use. Well, which one don't you like? The murder? What, do you want me to call it an unrest-related incident? If you were going to call him an informer, then I am going to call his death murder. It was an act of self-defense. By who? The people. It was all over. Yes, he was right. 
There was nothing left for him again. That one trip to the police station had ended everything. Nobody was ever going to talk to him or let him teach your children anymore. Tommy, it's all so wrong and stupid. And that's why I can't take the terrible stupidity of it all. <coughs> we needed him, all of us. I know. Then why is he dead? Stop asking me these questions. These questions, Isabel. You know the answer. They don't make any sense, Tommy. Okay. I know what you're feeling. I also love you. Doesn't help much to say it now, I, I, I know, but I did. Because he made me so angry and impatient with his old fashioned ideas, I didn't want to admit it. But if I had, it wouldn't have stopped me from doing what I did. The boy called the strikes and all. But I guess I should have tried that out to let him to make him understand why I was doing it. You were right to ask about it now. You know the most difficult word, word, uh, word in your language, Isabel? Sule. Yeah. I'll never forgive myself for not trying hard on this thing. And let me understand my, my true feelings about it. <coughs> right until the end, I kept trying to deny it to myself. I'm sorry. To him. I'm sorry. Some of my friends have already been detained, Isabel. <coughs> They're pulling in anybody they can lay their hands on. Where are you going to go, Kate Tim? No. That's the first place they'll look. I've called my friends and I've told them about everything. I'm heading on. To where? Far, Isabel. Far. I'm leaving the country. Does that mean what I think it does? I'm going to join the movement. I want to be a fighter. I've been thinking about it for a very long time. Now I know it's the best thing for me to do. I don't want to end up being one of the mobs that killed Mr. M. But that will happen to me if I stay here. Trust me, Isabel. I know what I'm doing. Believe me. I'll try. And you? your dad or somebody to drive you to the top of the Wapas Great Pass, like a mountain. It's on the way to Cradle. I know. He said it was there it all started, where he knew what he wanted to do with his life. Being a teacher, being a Mr. M, we all knew. You'll be close to him up there. I'll be on my way now. Do you need any money? No, Mr. Brown. Salah Kahuli. It's the cost of the money. You simply will talk to me. I'm a Kakuwe, Tommy. somewhere, Mr. M, traveling north. We don't exactly say where, but I think we can both guess, can't we? I've come here for a very old-fashioned reason, so I know you'll approve. I've come to pay my last respects to Manella Mayala. I know the old-fashioned way of doing that is to bring flowers and lay them on the grave and 
say a quiet prayer and then go back to your life, but it seems sort of silly this time. You'll have plenty of flowers up here these bring them, which it will. Well, I brought you something that I know will mean more to you than flowers or a prayer ever could. I brought you a promise. I'm going to make Anello Myla a promise. He gave me a lecture once about wasted lives. How much of it you'd seen, how much you hated it, and how much you didn't want it to happen to Tommy and me. I sort of understood what you meant at the time, but now I definitely do. Your death has seen to that. My promise to you is that I'm going to try as hard as I can, in every way that I can, to make sure that doesn't happen to me. I want my life to be useful in the way yours was. <coughs> I want you to be proud of me. I am one of your children, you know, you did. You did welcome me into your family. The future is still ours, Mr. Henry. 